Here's that Mike Harrison's fossils with his jeweler's loop on. And uh, this little bit here, Mike, right in the middle, you've got a bit missing there. You still haven't found this piece. No, it's in it's in amongst all the other pieces somewhere. And um, I've been through it all and um, time and time again. And um, I can't find it. What are you doing over here? He's got a little bit here that you're preparing with the scalpel there. All the little bits of lias peeled off onto the... Yeah, we'll give that a spray in a minute with um, with some water and then all this will lift slightly and we can just ping it all off with the scalpel. Oh yeah, there's like some this. coming off nicely. We need to get some water on it really because you don't want to create any damage. To see the sea lily underneath there, the crinoid stems. Museum quality piece. That bringing up the crinoid. Well, give it a spray, and um, that will soak in slowly, and then all that will um, start to lift off. And I can use the um, scalpel just to clean the pieces off. Um, look, what, you can see that the bubbling there. Look, can you see oh, all the yeah, bubbles? Look. Well, that's the water really it's, getting um, in. Yeah, there, really yeah. getting in there, and it will. Um, that will all start lifting. I don't know whether you can hear that snap. Crackle and pop. You smell that smell that comes off when I've sprayed it. Yeah. It's really earthy smell. Here's Mike struggling away, trying to fit all these crinoid together. God, it was a struggle. He's got his tags on the side there as well to link those crinoid oh, pieces look. up. There you go. Ah. I knew it went there somewhere. Fits in there. Is it a perfect fit or does it? you need a bit of a... Well, there's a, quite a gap there and I'm pushing and it's not... It's just not filling the gap. So that suggests to me that there's little crystals that have grown on the broken edges because obviously it's been broken for years and little crystals um, grow on the side. And you have to pick them off to get a good fit again. So the little crystals that are growing on the side, you have to there. pick those off yeah. to get a better fit. There you go. There's little crystals there. You need to pick them off. You can get a smooth fit. It does take a long time. And those have grown up over a course of time when the piece has been broken. Little one there, look. So you're quite used to this. Yeah, and you also get these little um little fractured pieces like that there. You have to pick them off because it's all throwing it out otherwise while you're trying to put it back together. Like that. And then it's just a case of, it gets very repetitive actually, having to keep trying to look at that. It's already a better fit, look. It's, it's much, much smoother much fit. Better fit. But there's room for improvement. What a lot of work. So another 10 minutes on that. That side's already been cleared. Just a brief moment in a fossil hunter's working life, doing that picking away of the edge of the crinoid to see if it will fit nicely on a, the rest of his piece. This is the real painstaking, careful work you have to do. Mike's already saved it from the destruction of the sea. And now this intricate work is taking place in his workshop to get this whole fossil crinoid specimen back together, a museum quality specimen 
that he's working on avidly, putting hours and hours and hours in to get this ready as a whole piece. What a jigsaw. I can feel the little bits pinging off and hitting my leg. <laughs> Doing really well there. Yeah. Just a little bit, bit of a gap there still. We'll fill that. We'll have another go. Well, I'm going to show you now the video of Mike finding the fossil crinoid in the mudslide. The main thing along the Jurassic coast is to stay away from the dangerous cliffs. They're liable to fall suddenly and without warning. Do not go near the vertical cliffs. They're very dangerous and they'll fall down and I've seen people severely injured. There's no digging in the cliffs in situ. That's part of the fossil collecting code of conduct. Here's just a fragment of what he is digging in a mudslip that is like soft cream cheese with special permission to do that work from the National Trust. There's no digging in the cliffs in situ, but look at this wonderful fossil that is working on at this juncture. Well, Mike's just going to go home now and get changed and continue some work for this lovely crinoid material on the beach. There is a fossil collecting code of conduct along the Jurassic Coast. You can see that online. Oh, it's a lovely piece though, wow. You always go together easiest, right? Let's hope for some really nice detail on this. What a treat to Look see. You've not lifted that oh. up before. No one's seen that in 190 oh, million years. Oh my word, look at that crinoid cup. Why that wash up a treat? Beauty. Wow. What an astonishing looking thing. Tiny bit of sand there, a little bit of sand, the attrition of the sand and sea, scrubbing that wonderful fossil up. Wow, look at that. That really does show a wonderful crinoid cup. I thought I'd just splice this film in with the dig to show you how Mike will go on further to prepare this intricate fossil specimen with the use of different hand tools. Amazing, I'm happy yeah. with that, that one piece alone. Really? Let alone, <laughs> let alone all what's <laughs> to worth, come. Worth all the work. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I put this one safe over here. Yep. They're gonna be the easy pieces to put back together. Look at that lovely um, imprint it's oh, left yeah, behind. Exactly. Well, I must take a photo of that. Yeah, exactly. Look at that print. Yeah. Always a job for wellies. Oh, it could come off. Oh, oh, that's nice. Wow, really good relief. There, I'll put it onto a nice thick piece as well. Yeah. Good sturdy bags. They're good sturdy one. bags, so they do the job. Perfect. I haven't got a muddy face as well, have I? No, you're actually you're really good um, uh, sort of with the mud pack and stuff. But uh, <laughs> look at that with the uh, with the boots there. And then the back of a fossil hunter's car. Well, I don't think if you're clean, tidy, there's no way you're fossil hunting properly. There you go, head torches. Just a few bits of crying on. <laughs> As long as you don't dig in the cliffs and sit you're allowed to take the fossils that wash out along the shoreline, the sea doing the work for you. And it was amazing to see Mike Harrison today doing the work out here, finding that crinoid, that exemplary piece 
of fossil material, absolutely stunning. Mike is working away diligently on his colossal crinoid fossil. You ain't seen nothing yet folks, I'll bring you the film of Mike's finished specimen in the future. It's a huge effort of concentration he uses to prepare these delicate crinoid stems, it's a labour of love. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for other awesome videos, awesome fossil videos we're doing in the near future on our channel, Lyme Regis Fossils. We will be looking at some beautiful nautilus specimens and other ammonites that we found along the Jurassic coast. So here, finally, Mike is doing the last of the work, the last of his concentrated effort on this small piece before he gives up and gets a bit of a rest before going on to do more work the next day on his colossal crinoid specimen. Have a look at the end of this video, I'll show you more of the huge specimen that he's got and is working on this massive Jurassic jigsaw. It's a wonderful thing to see and when it's all up and totally finished and ready, I'll show you the complete specimen, the completed thing in the near future.